very near. Even at the door, it says in verse 30, Verily I say unto you, that this generation, the generation that sees all those things happening, all those events happening, this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. It's telling us that there are some people that will think that maybe God has changed his plan. He has changed his mind. Maybe because it has taken so long in their own evaluation, estimation of how long, long is. You see, it might not happen again. But he says heaven and earth will definitely pass away. But his words shall not pass away. But of that day. And that hour, no as no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Yes, the angels know that it's coming. They don't know the time. They do not know the date. And he knew he'll be coming back. But the Father has res reserved that in his own knowledge that he knows exactly when. That's why the Lord said, in verse 33 because it's a day you do not know a time you do not know an hour you do not know you know that is coming very soon imminent it'll come anytime from now yet you don't know the exact time verse 35 verse 33 take heed take heed watch and pray for ye know not when the time is for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey is good taking that journey is going to heaven who left his house and gave authority to his servants he left his house he left the church is going to heaven he's giving authority assignment duty responsibility to his servants to the apostles and the preachers and the members of his household, members of the church, and to everyone his word is giving us something to do while we're waiting for the coming of the Lord. And he commanded the porter to watch. What she therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening. Or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly, mark that word, coming suddenly, when you didn't, when you were not prepared, he coming, he finds you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. What I say unto you, what he said to those disciples and apostles before him. Listening to him. He says unto all. And he says watch. He says get ready. He says get prepared. He says look at your life. And look at where you are spiritually. And see what the Bible has said. And see the qualifications it's expecting. And see the conditions, spiritual condition. He expects in your life and then you watch and you take heed and you take care to make sure that you're ready for his coming and you do that constantly you do that every time you're expecting him therefore you're examining yourself and you're finding out am i ready and if he reveals to you at any time that you are not ready you want to make sure that you repack your load. Readjust yourself and seek the face of the Lord so that you will be ready. And I pray that the Lord will grant us that spirit that is alert, that is getting ready and staying ready every time in Jesus' name. Are you there? I said he'll get us ready in Jesus' name. Constant readiness for Christ's return. 
There are three things we're going to look at before we pray. Number one, the world and its people before Christ's return. What will the world look like? What will the world around you, the community around you, the neighbors around you, what will they be doing? What will they look like just before the return of the Lord? The world and its people before Christ's return. Number two, watchfulness and preparation for Christ's return. He's telling you that he is coming. And because he is coming, you need to watch and you need to prepare. You need to do something. There are many people that think since he's coming, let him come. Ah, it's not just like that. If you're going to benefit by that coming, if you're going to receive the blessings of his coming, and if he's going to take you to heaven as he promised, there is a preparation you need to make, watchfulness and preparation for Christ's return. Number three, the wonder of preparedness. Those who are ready, the wonder of preparedness for the church's rapture. The church's rapture. When he comes and he takes the church away, and he takes the saints away, the wonder and the blessings that will be ours. Number one, the world and its people before Christ's return. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 36. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven. But my father only. But as the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He's telling us now the conditions of the world at the time of Noah. And he compares that to the time of his coming. And he says, as those days of Noah were, what they were doing and the state spiritual state in which they were he said even so it will be at the time of the coming of the son of man then he gives us the details in verse 38 for as the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking all they could think about is how will i eat what will I have? What will I wear? What job will I do? And as you think about the world in which we are living today, that's a preoccupation. We go to school, nothing wrong in that. But many people have no other thing doing. Get educated. Get a job. Build a house. Ride a car. Raise a family. That's all they're looking for. And there are some people that even associate with the Christian faith. And they go to one church or the other. And all their preoccupation, all their prayer, all their desires, anything they're asking every time relates with what are we going to eat? Where are we going to live? Who are we going to get married to? When are we going to have children? And Jesus said that was it at the time. Of those people in Noah's day, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And he said, they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. It came to them by surprise. 
and they all went through the flood and they all perished because they were not living for any other thing notice it's not just talking about their iniquity or their sin or their evil is talking about their preoccupation let's look at the condition of things at the time of noah we're looking at genesis chapter 6 genesis chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 1 and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, beautiful. And then it says, and they took them wives of all which they chose. That's what Jesus was talking about. He said, the men of this world at the time of Noah, all they could think about is look for a beautiful lady and get married, raise a family. And then for the women, look for a handsome man and get married and raise a family. That's all they were thinking about. And if you look around you today, why do people go to church? Why do they pray? Why do they fast? Why do they appear religious? Almost fanatical in their zeal and passion, saying they're seeking the Lord. They're not seeking the Lord for his glory most of the time. They're seeking the Lord for what they can have. And he says, and the Lord said in verse 3, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. The Lord told them, there is a limit. Marrying and giving in marriage, there's a limit. Eating and drinking, there is a, there's a limit. Training yourself and getting a job, there's a limit. There's a limit to all that in your life. A limit to which you can go. Because a time is coming when the marriage will not be profitable. A time is coming when the work will not be useful. A time is coming when the material things of the world will fail you. And then it goes on to say, in verse in verse 4 it says there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came in unto the daughters of men and they bear children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown the many people today, all they can think about is my children, they go to college, my children, they get profession, they get a profession, my children, they have this, they have that. That's what's their preoccupation at that time. And then it says in verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of a search was only evil continually they were not thinking of righteousness they were not thinking of seeking the face of the lord so that they could be saved so that they could have eternal life so that they could have the grace of god in their lives repentance was out of their mind righteousness out of their mind living according to the grace of god according to the plan of god out of their mind look at that verse 5 again god saw what does god see in your life today in your family today in your neighborhood today and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth the world is getting worse and worse righteousness is absent holiness is absent even as you go from religious camp to another religious camp you'll find that there's no righteousness the grace to live god in godliness is not there and what god saw at that time that's what he sees today but don't go too far look at your own heart look at your own environment and look at your own family and look at your own condition spiritual condition you might be religious are you righteous 
You might go to church. Are you born again? Are you living the life that is showing that you are ready for the coming of the Lord? And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil and that continually. Verse 6, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it greet him at his heart. Why? Because the purpose of creation was not being fulfilled. He created man so that man will be like him, will look like him, will seek like him, will act like him, so that his life, his behavior, so that his comportment and conduct will be righteous and holy and pure. Because he made man in his own image, but man had gone the other way. And that's what you find today. You find people all around you. And it might be yourself as well. That you're not living as God wants you to live. That's why the judgment came upon them. And that's why the judgment is coming today. It gripped him at his heart that he had made man. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me. That means he regretted it, that, that I have made them, but now I found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's what we need today. If we're going to get ready for the coming of the Lord, we need that grace. The grace for salvation and the grace for a holy life, the grace for a righteous life, the grace for sanctification. He purifies our hearts, he makes our hearts attuned to his heart. He makes us just like him, like he wants us to be. That's the grace we need today if we're going to be ready for the coming of Christ, the coming of the Lord. The coming of our Savior and Lord. We're looking at um, Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 28. We're looking at the condition of the world. The character of the world. At the time of Christ's coming. Just before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it says... It's like it was in the olden days. It tells us in Luke chapter 17, reading here from verse 28. Luke 17 verse 28, likewise also. It's saying also because it's giving us an illustration already. Illustration relating to the time of Noah. Illustration relating to the time of the flood. It says, here is another illustration. Here is another example. Here is another event that took place those days that will be very similar to the time of the coming of the Lord. Verse 28, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lord, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, that's commerce. And if you look at the commercial situation of the world today, it's like that's the only scene. Or watching the, you know, the rise of the.